So what do you want to change right now? I want to change how I feel about the pending divorce that I started a year ago. Okay. I want to change how I feel about it. All right. So there's there's a bunch of different ways to go here, and you do understand that this is a teaching demo, which means I'm going to be teaching and doing and teaching and doing and and teaching you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when was the last time that you had that feeling? The bad feeling? Mm -hmm. um, a dream I had the other night, probably two nights ago. Two okay. nights ago. Yeah. So it's two nights ago. Um, we had you, you had the dream. So when do you? I mean, when are you consciously aware of this feeling? When, when you wake? I woke up in the morning. Yeah, like three in the morning. Yeah. So you woke up at three in the morning, mm -hmm. and when you imagine that for a moment, mm -hmm. right? That feeling. You wake up three in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is it in your body? That feeling. It's like here. Okay. So right here, take a moment and just tell me, what is it like? If this feeling were a cartoon, mm. what is that like? Um, something grabbing me. Okay, and in, in cartoon land, yeah. what has to happen to make that stop? I have to break it away. So close your eyes for a moment. Imagine breaking that away and getting free which is what you're getting. It might not feel that way, but you're getting free. So, what are you noticing? It's lighter. Good, it's lighter. Okay. Less of a chokehold. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Now, um, how do you want to feel? I want to feel like I used to years ago. I want to feel happy, I want to feel light, I want to feel on top of the world like I always used to feel. I haven't felt that way in two years. Okay. Yeah. So, in other areas other than that dream, mm -hmm. when else is that feel that feeling you don't want, when is that triggered? When is that triggered but it's not connected to the divorce or no, the dream? No, it's connected to the divorce. Oh. It's not connected to the dream. In other words, stop. Here's what we're doing. So, you all know it's the meta pattern that we're doing, at always. And so I'm looking for where I'm going to paste a bunch of resources. But I need to know exactly where that's going to be. If it's a copy and a paste, right? We're going to copy how he wants to feel, how you used to feel, but even better. Because I always say that when people say, I want to feel like I was long before this ever happened. I think, yeah, but you have no idea yet how all of this experience is going to inform you on so many levels, especially with your work with people, that, you know, I hope to help you to feel a little bit of how you used to feel and that it's, it's happier and freer, but also more informed, wiser, but also stronger and more resilient. Mm -hmm. like because these are the things that we learn from life, and life happens. So where else does, uh, does that old feeling the bad Trigger, feeling? The bad feeling. When I think about the past, when I think about why things happened and I... Stop. So, sorry, you all know I interrupt, right? Why? Because number one, he's going in a direction that is not quite useful just yet. When I need the information, I'll let him go there. Number two, I'm also helping him to get used to me interrupting patterns. Mm -hmm. So. I know a lot of you are therapists and have a tendency to let your clients talk, feeling that in some way, you know, that's your job is to hear them out. But you know what? He's probably talked about this a lot, or at least thought about this a lot. He doesn't need to do it now when we're changing it. Yes. Right? Yes. So, um, when you think about the past, now, do you still have contact? No. Okay. Not in 10 months. Really? Yep. Well, that's good for you. So now, the only contact you're having is inside your head. And then, fast-forwarding to the future of the court date in May. So I think of the past and then I fast-forward to the future. Okay, so when he stop. So, you're watching him, right? So he looks up and he fast-forward into the future and he's accessing this image, right? This image of when he's going to have to deal in this, this court date. 
So when I see a future-oriented thing like that, I want to change that because that is where if you can think about this and just realize this is the final step to you being free, right? Yes. Yeah, so. And open, and then it'll be over and done, and you move forward. And how fucking cool is that? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so how do you want to feel instead? How I feel right now. So how you feel right now, and imagine, right? So this image you were making mm -hmm. of the, is it the court? Is it what, yes. what exactly is in that image you made? Yeah, it's the uncomfortableness of going to the court, of not speaking, of... Um... Stop. So this is what we do. We hallucinate. We hallucinate all the time. And so he already has this this hallucination of this thing that's not, you know, that's happening in May, of how he's not going to be able to do this, or he's going to feel bad, or he's going to do this, or she's going to do this, and, and all of this shit is made up, right. Right? right? So let's make up something that's supportive. Let's make up something that informs you, so that your brain actually rehearses a positive pattern. So when you go in there, you're already, you know, halfway to success. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so there's that image. Are you in that image? Yes. And what are you doing in that image? I'm sitting down at the bench in the hallway. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a typical movie or TV show. Yeah. You're sitting in the bench in the hallway. It kind of reminds me of getting called into the principal's office. Ah. I hate rules. I don't like people telling me what to do. So I resent, resent the whole thing and resist it. Right. Yes. Now I hear you. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. I know you <laughs> And what if you were looking at this as, it, you know, as something exciting is going to happen in the room? Have you ever been sitting in a bench, sitting outside of a room, waiting for something good to happen? I'm sure. Um, I'd have to think, but I'm sure it's happened. Well, once again, we're hallucinating. So we might as well start to play around with that. Right? Because there's other examples of waiting for something good to happen. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, this is good. You've been dealing with this shit for over two years. Yes. This is the last bit of it. This is like, you're crossing the finish line, and then you can just be free. So what does it feel like when you're free again? Light feels um, a lot of relief. A lot. And where do you feel in your body when you're feeling that lightness? Right and here. That relief? Just right here. So it moves out this way, you're feeling that way, and it feels really good. And as you imagine that, imagine sitting on the bench, right? Like this is the last bit, it's almost over. Like you can see, you can see the finish line, right? You've been running and running and running, you're almost there. How does that feel when you're almost there? It feels great. And as you imagine walking out of the courthouse and it's done, mm -hmm. and you can literally put this shit behind you, and you're feeling light, how does that feel? Awesome. And when it feels awesome, imagine sitting on that bench and them calling your name. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes, I'm almost there. And now you have permission to cross the finish line. So them calling you is like, all right, I'm ready. So when you feel that feeling mm -hmm. and you think about sitting on that bench, how does that feel? feels great. It feels great. Yeah, it feels exciting. And when, yeah, and when you're feeling this great feeling and you know that you know, your brain has been doing what it's been doing, Replaying shit because you're human. Yes. That's what we do. Living in the now is, as you know, very difficult for most of us. <laughs> so, so your brain has just been doing what it's doing, but the more you start cultivating this feeling, the more you start to spread it around. So if you feel this feeling and you imagine like sitting at it, on the bench, they're calling your name, you get to go in there and cross that finish line. And how does that feel? It feels great. It feels great. And when you imagine that great feeling, even when you imagine that uh, morning where you woke up at 3 in the morning having had that dream, when you imagine taking this feeling and then knowing that that dream is just kind of the, the last remnants of neural firing that your brain is going to go through, but it's going to start to change now. I see that. So when you imagine even going back in time, feeling this relief knowing it's almost, it's almost done, right? Mm -hmm. And that every day is closer to that moment in May when it's done. When you imagine being in bed and you wake up having had that crazy dream, how do you feel when you imagine it now? A lot better. A lot better. Mm -hmm. And when you think about all the replaying that, you know, we all do this shit, right? The replaying, well, I should have done this, I could have done this, why didn't I see that coming? All of that, 
-hmm. is stuff that when you're so far ahead of this, when you're free, and you can look back and realize you learned a lot. I did. And you can take that on, and you might be sitting across from someone someday in the future who wants help with an issue very similar. And you're going to be so freaking congruent when you let them know that you can get over this. And when you say to them, you know what, I get it, I've been there, and you can get over this. Mm -hmm. right? I see that happening, yeah. So when you feel that feeling, knowing that on some level, this was, you know, graduate school for you, uh, for what you want to do mm -hmm. in the future when you're coaching people, mm -hmm. is navigate through emotional stickiness and stuff that, you know, and this is what makes us good at what we do. You know, I always say that what makes me really good at what I do is because I've been around the block a few times. There's almost no issue I can't relate to, fortunately <laughs> or fortunately, on some level. And I think knowing that, knowing that I can look at someone who's addicted to something and be like, yeah, I get it, or look at someone who has chronic pain and say, you can get over this. Look at someone who's been through these types of relationships and say, you know, you can get free of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel good, right? It does. So when you imagine this feeling and you think about sitting on that bench and you're almost at the finish line, mm -hmm. how does that feel? Awesome. It feels great. It feels complete. It feels complete. And this is it, man. Mm -hmm. Fine. Right? And it feels good. So hold up a minute. So let's break it down just a little bit, right? So step one of the meta pattern, okay, looking for the trigger. Now, I could have gotten a few more, right? But I wanted some examples. So we had one in the past. We have one in the future. You saw him very clearly show you, right, what he's doing. If you're paying attention to his face, to his breathing, to his body, to his eyes, you'll see when he's talking to himself. You'll see when he's making those images. Sometimes it's good to just say, what's in the image? Now that, too, is also a dissociation. Mm -hmm. So then I'm talking, I break to turn to you. Why? That's a cheap and easy dissociation. You saw me interrupt patterns. Why? Because he was starting to go into the negative thing, and we don't need that yet. So, so many different ways to get from associating into where the problem was, whether it's sitting on that bench, and you saw his body, you saw this. The metaphoric two-step, right? What is it? Where is it in your body? That takes it from this idea construct. It takes it from all of this crap that he had been going through and brings it down into just a, a kinesthetic, just a, a, a somatic experience. It localizes this thing and takes it out of the analyzing and into, oh, what is it? By asking him if it were a cartoon, that not only lightens, lightens it up a bit, it changes his emotional state. It also is another layer of dissociation because you can't associate into a cartoon. But it also gives us a lot more room to play. So I'm inviting on some level a childlike playfulness with cartoons and there's no boundaries. So that if he would have said something, I know this is for you too, you're a practitioner. So I'm watching it land. Right? Just see that? Hmm, yes, got it. Um, so when we invite that playfulness and we, we turn it into a cartoon, well then there's many things. Instead of just letting go, he could have had these turn into balloons and float away. He could have had them just disintegrate and disappear because in cartoon land there's no laws of gravity. There's no laws of physics. We can have anything happen. So it opens us up. Notice I didn't say what should happen, even though when he said it chokehold, I could have easily, easily have said, well, imagine those hands letting go. By letting him come up with it, it's far more organic. Got it? So then a couple of times, I made sure that, uh, you know, I'm aware of the temporal shifts. I'm aware of once he shows me the resource, right? That's why I ask. I don't have to be this, you know, um, amazing sensory acuity individual so that I spot every subtle shift. I'm not Milton Erickson. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I've got no problem asking. 
right? What's it feel like when you're feeling this feeling? Where in your body is that? He'll show you it is almost always the opposite gesture, right? So we go from this to how do you want to feel? This, free, and it's up here. So as soon as I see that, I am constantly aware of me doing this. Another thing that you all have heard me say, but for those of you watching, maybe you haven't, um, I always go first. So as soon as he tells me how he wants to feel, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling free. I'm feeling this, this like I'm almost there, so that my tonality shifts, my nonverbal communication, which is leaking out of us every moment, millions of bits of information. He's receiving from my uh, unconscious communication and vice versa. I know that if I go into this state, my brain goes into a state, his brain, mirror neurons are firing off and we're creating a resonance circuitry here. So I'm going to be mirroring and holding constant the resource he says he wants. But also when I sit down with him, I see you perfect. Having already fixed this, I see you smiling, I see you resilient. When I get someone to laugh, so we laughed, and I said, how do you want to feel? He said, as I feel right now. But I got him to laugh so that my brain goes, ch -ch. Mm. and so I can hold that in the back of my mind and let that idea of you, that image of you, as curious and laughing and relaxed, let that be the internal marker for me. And my nonverbal communication will then be congruent with all of that. So now that I've distracted you enough, <laughs> as you imagine sitting in the bench, it's waiting. Not an issue anymore. Good. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> not an issue at all. Awesome. Thank all you right. So much. Thank you for, for volunteering. Now, before you jump down, are there any questions about any of that? Really? All of you? So well explained. Thank you. I try. Yeah? Questions? My question would be is would you leave him with something that if he has a dark day or a bad moment like the EFT or something like that? Well, absolutely. Great question. And the question is, you know, would, would I have armed him? Yeah. Typically most of my students know that I'm going to teach you some different tricks just because I like people to have stuff to play with. Okay? I'm also talking about this in a way that it's a copy and a paste. And even though I have this where I can speak to all of you and the camera, in my office what I'd be saying is, I want you to think about this as a copy and a paste, right? We're just going to rewire your brain. And I'm going to use the explanations to also be hypnotic commands. So how many times did I say, um, God, I can't remember, but I said things like, you can change. So that when you're sitting across from someone who has a similar issue to what you had, you're going to be able to look at them and say, you can change. How many times did I embed the command that you can change? Mm -hmm. So when you tell little stories like that, and you just shift it, right? So one day you're going to be sitting there, you're going to realize how much you learned and how far you've come. You're going to be able to sit with someone and say, I know you can change. Right? How many times am I going to repeat shit like that? Now, consciously, he's not catching that, but unconsciously, you're catching it. And so it all aids in communicating to the unconscious mind as well. And I'm hyper aware of that. So in my office, I would have said, think of this as a copy and a paste. We're, we've got this thing, and every time you thought of that, you have been pasting negative chemicals. Right? That's all we're playing with chemistry. So every emotional state has biochemicals attached to it. That's why when I get laughter, I'm going to have him see the trigger. It doesn't matter that he didn't say, I want to feel laughter when I imagine sitting on the bench. Any positive emotional state that I get, I'm going to connect it to the problem. Because it doesn't matter. We're taking right that neural network that you had for bench, court, ah. <laughs> and now it's going to be bench laughter. Now it's going to be think of that. And now we're, we're kind of urging your neural network to make connections with other things. Laughter, confidence, feeling free. 
curiosity. I keep getting him curious, and if you can't see the curiosity, right, you all are nodding. So you've, you've got great nonverbals because you can totally see when I'm, when I'm teaching a group, there's certain things that, that I love to see. And I love to see the expression you keep trying on, which is you, he, his mind goes like this, right? His mind. <laughs> yes, because I can see your mind. <laughs> he goes like this. And you see him starting to process, and he's linking the images and the thoughts, and then he goes down, and he talks to himself, and then he goes like this. <laughs> and you see it. It's beautiful. This, I love this. And I'm always checking for it when I'm teaching in front of a group. You know, I can see when people go into a bit of confusion, and then I'm just hyper aware to keep checking on them and make sure that it, it lands. Right? Because I like provoking a little bit of confusion. From confusion, we can go anywhere. It's a great hub state, which allows learning, right? It, people, that's the perfect state to learn. Mm -hmm. So once again, I'm sorry, I got to collapse it again. When you think of the bench, that's it. <laughs> we're good. We're done. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you.